Okay, welcome to another Orbiter 2010 video. And this video is going to be another installment in my Absolute Beginner Guide, the video series that I'm putting together that has a special focus on people who are brand new to Orbiter. Now, in the last few videos, we've been concentrating mostly on building our toolkit, adding additional MFDs that don't come with Orbiter by default. You know, we've added a burn time calculator, base sync, arrow break, and some others. Now, I thought uh, it was well past time that we get back into actually flying. So in this video, I am here on runway 15 at KSC, and this is one of the default scenarios that uh, comes with the XR2 Ravenstar. It's scenario number one, which is ready for takeoff to the ISS. So I thought it would be good to uh, kind of demonstrate uh, some things that we've actually already covered in prior videos, which is just taking off, getting into orbit, and rendezvousing with the ISS. But I thought it would be good to do that again and, and, and use the XR2 because uh, going forward, we're going to be using this vessel more than, uh, than the standard Delta Glider. So once again, uh, we're ready for takeoff, so everything is already... Uh, buttoned up, you know, the, the nose cone is closed, the retro doors are closed, the hover doors are closed, the air brakes are in, and the radiator is not extended. So we are ready to go. And with this scenario, it works out that basically as soon as you start, uh, the time to the node is already at the point where you need to take off and start flying right away. And that's why I actually have it paused here at the beginning so that we don't go past the time to uh, take off. So let's go ahead and start up. We'll get into the air and we'll talk more about the flight as we go. So let me unpause and we're going to go full throttle on the main engines. And again, we'll listen for our call outs. Uh, the, there's 100 knots already and we'll listen to V1 and then rotate. We don't always get that call out. Okay, we did get the call out, and as soon as you get rotate, it's actually not a bad idea to throttle back a little bit. Then raise the landing gear as soon as you get up to about uh, 10, 10 meters off the ground or so. And then go back to full throttle on the main, and in this scenario, since the ISS is coming out of the north and going south, we actually want to bank to about 136 degrees as opposed to uh, 40, uh, 43, so let's go ahead and do that. And the main thing to watch with the XR2, again, you know, on takeoff, you can cause a failure right away if you leave the landing gear out too long. So it's a good idea to uh, throttle back a little bit until you get the landing gear raised and locked, then go back to full throttle on the main. After that, it becomes, uh, for people, probably the next hardest part is not burning up in the atmosphere when you start the scram ascent. So we'll kind of talk a little bit about that. We want to get up to, you know, roughly 15 kilometers, and then we'll go completely level. So we want to, you know, think ahead. We don't want to wait till we're at 15 kilometers before we start leveling off. Um, I could actually have a slightly higher um, pitch than this. I'm only at, you know, 32 degrees or so. That's not quite steep enough. I should have been flying at about 50 degree pitch. There is a there is a flight profile and ascent profile that's better than others, so you just gotta get a feel for it. You can see we're at 13 kilometers now, so I'm going to go ahead and begin leveling off. And the, pur the purpose of leveling off is because we're now up out of the really dense part of the atmosphere, and we just wanna pick up some horizontal speed. There's Mach 2. And according to the PDF, if you open the XR flight manual, it says that about Mach 3.5 is when you want to start your scram ascent. So we'll do that. You can see we're a little above 15 kilometers. That's fine. Somewhere between 15 and 20, I think, is good. So listening for the call out now for Mach 3. Watching also the whole time. There's Mach 3, so let's open the scram doors. And I'll, the whole time I'm watching, you know, my time to the node and the uh, radio here. Let's bring up the scram engines. Let's kill the main engine, and the, the point of the scram ascent is to save your main fuel. So as soon as you start the scram engines, you want to uh, reduce your main engines. Now we really have to watch our temperature display, 
it's a good idea actually to let your temperature get into maybe the yellow portion but you don't want to you know you don't want to let it get into the red and the trick to a scram ascent is to stay ahead of the flight everything that you see in the temperature display is basically a result of what you did 10 uh, maybe 5 10 seconds ago so so you can see now we're kind of getting into the red uh, we don't really want that necessarily so let me pitch up just a little bit there we are we're back into the yellow but we don't want to we don't want to ascend too fast notice my vertical speed is you know plus 300 meters a second I don't want to let that get to you know 700 800 900 meters a second because the whole point of the uh, scram engines is to get your horizontal velocity up while you're still low enough in the atmosphere to uh, to be able to do that and if you get up too high if you get up to you know 65 70 kilometers then your scram engines become ineffective so also you know the whole time you're ascending watch your aligned plane MFD make sure that the relative inclination is counting down but also make sure that the time to the node is counting down if the time to the node is counting up it means you are uh, banked too much in one direction or another and you need to go the other way notice that my hull temperature is increasing a bit so I'm gonna pitch up just a little see it cools off as soon as I pitch up just the slightest amount and the goal here is to use all the scram ascent uh, use all the scram fuel if we have any scram fuel left over when we get to orbit then we didn't have uh, the best ascent possible and scram fuel in orbit is just a total waste of mass so if you have any scram fuel left over when you get to orbit uh, you just want to dump it because that it has no use once you get to orbit again just watching the hull temperature staying ahead of that heat curve watching the aligned plane MFD I'm actually gonna bank a bit to the left make sure that that time to the node is you know decreasing a little bit faster than what it is right now and everything is looking good we've gone through over half the scram fuel so far we're up to 4,400 meters a second the scram diffuser temperature down here uh, tells you when you need to close up your scram doors and ideally we will burn through all the scram fuel before we get to that point but sometimes you have five or ten percent scram fuel remaining and you have to close the scram doors anyway because otherwise you'll overheat everything temperature is increasing a bit so I'm gonna pitch up a little bit stay ahead of that heat curve make sure I don't overheat the uh, hull and let's see we're about 1200 degrees and it doesn't take much you know don't don't be get too aggressive with it and pull way back because then you're just going to increase your vertical speed by way too much okay our uh, I mean, go ahead and bank back to the right now a little bit I can see the time to the note is you know counting down and we're still one over one and a half degrees out of uh, plane with the ISS in fact, we can probably put in a little bit more right bank now. You can see as I put in some right bank, the rate is uh, it's increasing or decreasing depending on how you want to word that. And notice the scram diffuser temperature is up to 6,500. When it gets to about 75, 7,800, somewhere around there, we actually have to close the scram doors. But I think we'll probably manage to burn through uh, most of the scram fuel if not all of it we're up to 6,000 meters a second go ahead and bank some more to the right because the uh, time to note is still counting down and we still got okay scram fuel is low that's good it means we have gonna burn through the mo most of it and we're almost in plane our relative inclination is only 0.8 at this point as soon as you hear that scram temperature warning close your scram doors and then go back to uh, full throttle on the main it's also a good idea to pitch up a little bit once you uh, burn through the scram fuel so that you can now get up out of the atmosphere completely. Let me uh, bank actually to the left because of the time to the nodes increasing. And we don't want that. And, uh, bank a bit to the left, kind of overshot. And now, it's actually I should have brought this up already, we're going to bring up Orbit MFD so we can watch 
or when we are at 200 kilometers apoapsis. I've actually banked way to the left now because I overshot by a, a bit there and you can see the rate is positive so we need to uh, want to bring down you know the relative inclination okay now I'm just watching ap apoapsis we're at 100 kilometers bank back to the center start reducing the throttle and we can actually kill the throttle a little bit early about right here because of the lift of the XR2 uh, you'll notice if you kill the throttle when, you're, when your apoapsis is at 190, 195, you'll still continue to climb. Uh, the apoapsis will continue to increase a bit. So while I'm still here in a part of the atmosphere that still has some uh, effects, what I can do is roll the vessel as needed to make sure that my relative inclination does not increase. You notice right now that it's 0.06. If I just let the vessel roll in any particular direction, then um, then the relative inclination could technically increase. Once we get up above about 100 kilometers, we don't have to worry about it. But when, when we're still at 75, 80 kilometers, there's still some small effect from the atmosphere. And we can take advantage of that and steer our, our relative inclination as low as possible. Once you get up, a little bit higher than we are now it won't make any difference any longer but you know here we're still getting some small benefit and uh you know our relative inclination APU fuel 90%. is uh very important to have that very low when you arrive in orbit in fact this is really good if it you know 0, 0.00 is perfect but if you're less than 0 0.50 then you can uh, rendezvous without doing any kind of plane alignment I would say now we're not going to get too much more out of the atmosphere, so let's open the radiator. And it's important that you remember to do this. The XR vessels, all of them, have a coolant system. And if you do not open the radiator, you'll find that when you do a little bit of time warp, your coolant temperature display down here will increase quickly and it'll get into the red and you'll overheat the vessel and that'll be a big problem. So once the radiator's open, it's a good time to turn off the APU. APU and we no longer have use of the surface controls, so we want to turn uh, rotation mode, or we want to set RCS mode rotation. to uh, rotation or linear, depending on what we want to do. And if you notice here, our relative inclination is now down to point O2, so there, just in the last 10 kilometers, we were still getting just a small amount of uh, correction just from that little trace amount of atmosphere. Okay, so let's uh, press H. Let's get over to orbit HUD. And let me set the joystick out of the way. Once I'm in orbit, I don't use the joystick for anything anymore. I don't really think it uh, has a purpose. So notice that a couple of things. Number one, we have uh, 62 percent of our main fuel remaining and we have almost no scram fuel uh, the amount of mass that we have here is minimal so it doesn't really matter but what we can do if we go down to the lower panel by pressing control down arrow we can dump that last little bit of uh, scram fuel and this number is so small that it really doesn't matter but if you arrive in orbit with you know 10 or 20 percent of scram fuel remaining then you definitely want to dump it because all fuel dump. all scram fuel depleted just waiting for the noise to stop all your subsequent burns after you arrive in orbit will cost more if you're carrying a bunch of extra dead weight you know a bunch of dead mass so it's a good idea to dump whatever scram fuel you've got left okay so now that we're in orbit we've got our radiator open let's uh press F8 to get over to this view so that we have the larger MFDs to look at. And let's just kind of take into consideration what we need to do in order to rendezvous with the ISS. Uh, of course, as always, one of our highest priorities is to raise the other side of our orbit once we reach apoapsis. But I always like to check and see if I'm going to cross over one of the nodes before getting to that point. In this case, I'm not. 
and I know that I'm not because my time to the apoapsis is 670 seconds and the time to the next node crossage uh, passage is uh, more than double that it's 1400 seconds so we just want to happily warp time forward to get over to apoapsis and I do have various permutations I said that word wrong again um, perturbations enabled so my relative inclination will change it won't hold steady at 0, 0.02 if you have non-spherical gravity sources enabled you'll actually find that that happens so let's warp time forward get over to the apoapsis and as we're getting pretty close to that point we're going to utilize uh, one of our tools that we downloaded uh, one of the first ones I gave an example of was burn time calculator so let's bring that up and in the example in the video where I showed you know how to download install burn time calculator I showed how to how we could use that to you know help circularize our orbit now circularizing the orbit is a very simple task you can do that manually but I believe it's I personally think it's more realistic to use these types of tools uh, for for this purpose so this uh, this burn time calculator is slightly different than the one that I showed in the uh, video this one's newer and I recommend using this one instead of the one that I showed in the video at the time I made the video this particular one was not available on orbit hangar but it is now so I recommend using this one uh, it's basically the same thing there's just the buttons have been moved around a little bit and there's one additional feature that this one has but we won't really talk about that but this is showing that the time to the periapsis is 2675 seconds that's not what we want we actually want the time to the apoapsis because that's when we're going to do our burn so we get over to there by pressing MD now we have time to apoapsis and we just press the circularization button and it says the time to ignition is in that number so we'll warp time forward we'll get closer to that point and then when we get down to maybe 60 seconds we will come back to real time like now and we'll go ahead and use the uh, prograde autopilot or translation if you want to be a little bit more efficient you can rotate manually well we don't actually have time to rotate manually um, so we'll go ahead and use the prograde autopilot you do need to be in the prograde position when you do this maneuver when you do this burn uh, orbit circularization because we need to burn into the direction of flight to raise the other side of our orbit you can see once we get around to this point here we would be coming down into the atmosphere hitting the earth and crashing so it's uh, very important that we raise the other side of our orbit and if we want to kind of speed things up a little bit we can go ahead and use a 10x time warp and now there we are we are now burning for I didn't catch how much time that was I think it was about an eight second burn or so and that has now raised the other side of our orbit so we are uh, 215 kilometers uh, more or less on both sides okay now if we want we can do a bit of plane alignment when we get over to uh, either this node or this node but it makes sense to do it here because that one's coming up next and again we'll have a little bit of trouble keeping our relative inclination at that number due to the fact that we have uh, various perturbations enabled that will cause this to change but when we get around to the ascending node we can if we recall from our plane alignment video when we're coming up to the ascending node we need to burn anti-normal but since this is such a small number we don't need to position the vessel into the orbit minus position translation rotation let me get the vessel just uh, since we're already facing prograde basically let me show what we can do that's a little bit more efficient So if we were to rotate the vessel into the orbit minus position, we know that we would be turning the vessel from this direction to this direction. We would be facing basically straight down, and we know that because here we have the negative 10, and you know all those numbers are down there. So that means we need to burn 
down, down based on our current orientation. And since this number is so low, we can burn down just by using the RCS translation. Uh, translation thrusters. If we burn, if we use the translation thrusters out of the top of the vessel, that is effectively the same thing as burning down. And since, and since our alignment is so close to zero, there's really no point in bothering to rotate the whole vessel into the down position and using the main engines. That's just gonna waste uh, rotation uh, thrusters, you know, we have a limited amount of RCS. It's 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 a lot. Don't get me wrong. You know, we've got 99% left, and we're not going to use much of it. But just to be more efficient, instead of bothering to rotate the vessel down, we can just use the uh, linear translation. And I'll show you what I mean as we get closer to that point here <clears throat> in just 120 seconds. But we're at time warp, so we'll get there quickly. rotation and the thing here is that we need to burn for 0.18 seconds if we were using the full power of the main engines but since we're using linear translation we know that we are using engines uh, we're using thrust that's far less powerful than the full power of the main engine so we're going we're going to want to start the burn a little bit early normally we would do this burn when we were uh, just one second away from the node <clears throat> because if we were just doing a quick burst of main engine, then we would be doing a burst that would last for, you know, 0.18 seconds or about one uh, fifth of a second. But again, since we're just going to use <clears throat> translation, we want to start it a bit sooner. How soon exactly? I don't know. But since it's such a small number, I'm just going to say maybe 10 or 15 seconds. Translation. Okay, so there's translation. And we're going to be doing this with the number 8 on the numeric keypad. So... There's 10 seconds, and I'm now pushing the number 8, and you can see that the uh, rate is negative 0.002, relative inclination coming down. Relative inclination is now 0, 0.00, and the amount of estimated thrust that we need is also 0, 0.00. Now let's target the ISS here in orbit MFD. And we can see we are very close to it. It's a little bit behind us. And since we are in front of the ISS, again, the green line is where we are at in our orbit around the Earth. And the yellow line here is where the ISS is at in its orbit. Now, try to remember back to the video where I explained, you know, the time that it takes to go around the planet. You can see that our orbital period is 5,311 seconds whereas the orbital period of the ISS is 5,489 seconds. That means it takes it longer to complete one orbit than we do, uh, or rather than we will. So we are, with every time we go around the planet, we're going to get farther and farther ahead of the ISS. This distance is going to grow. So in order to catch up to the ISS or to have it catch up to us, we need to extend our orbital period so that it takes longer than that number. And the way we do that is by raising uh, at least one side of our orbit up to the altitude of the ISS or higher, actually it needs to be a little bit higher, so that we are going slower than the ISS. And if we're going slower than the ISS, then it will catch up to us. So having said that, let's bring up you just think here for a moment. Let's bring up map MFD and let's set the display to orbit plane and let's not target Cape Canaveral, so no base. And let's kind of maybe decide if we want to set up a particular rendezvous point. Uh, if we want to do that, it would be a good idea to start thinking about that right now because we're coming into the dark side uh, we're crossing the day-night terminator here in a moment and that is a good opportunity for us to uh, raise the other side of our orbit so that uh, we can establish a point in space where we want to rendezvous with the ISS so let's go ahead and do that let's go to prograde 
And here in just a moment, right as we cross the day-night terminator, we're going to go ahead and raise the other side of our orbit all the way up to the altitude of the ISS. We may even go a bit higher. Its apoapsis is 365, so we want to be at least that high if we're going to uh, set this up so that it catches up to us. So let's just go forward a little bit more. About uh, somewhere about here. And again, the point of doing the maneuver at this point is that it's going to set that part of our orbit right there is going to be the highest point of our orbit. And we can use that so that we can set up a rendezvous point and be on the day side of the planet when we actually rendezvous. So let's go apply a little bit of main engine. We're not going to go full power. We're just going to apply you know, tenth of thrust or half thrust, something like that. And again, I'm watching the apoapsis, and we want to be above that point. So that's good enough for now. Uh, when we circularize the orbit, we may uh, bring up the apoapsis a little bit more than that even. Okay, now, before we end this part of the video, because we are coming up on 30 minutes already here, let's uh, kind of assess everything. What we're going to do is we want to come over to this point and we just want to make sure that the altitude that we're at at this point is going to be sufficient to allow us to rendezvous. So we want to know exactly what the altitude of the ISS is at that point, that little green bubble there. And because we have the gravitational param uh, perturbations enabled, this is going to kind of jump around all over the place. So we have to do a bit of um, we have to do a, a bit of making up for the errors of orbit MFD. Because you'll notice here it says the ap the apoapsis is 366, but that's not going to hold. So let's warp time forward. Let's get around to that point. And you'll notice that we're still gaining on the ISS as we go around. It's because we're traveling faster than the ISS. And you can see its apogee, uh, apoapsis, and its periapsis is kind of moving around. Okay, so we're coming up to our apoapsis here in just a moment. And actually, as we do that, and we're there now, so let's go prograde and let's raise the other side of our orbit as well. That way we uh, we still want to have this be our apoapsis, but we want to bring up the other side to pretty close to that point. I'm not going to use the burn time calculator to do that because I don't want to necessarily completely circularize my orbit. But I'm just going to bring up the other side. I'm going to bring up the periapsis to about 340. That'll be low enough that there's a, there's a difference between our apoapsis and periapsis. So right about here, maybe a little more than that. About right there. And now let's, so the, the ISS is basically at our apoapsis and its altitude at this point, we can see is 353.7. So let's make a note of that, 353.7. So we want our altitude to be 357, uh, 353.7 at that point. So we're going to go around to our periapsis, and we're going to uh, we're going to adjust this side of our orbit so that it's more, uh, so that it's closer to that number. And before we do that, though, we are going to go ahead and uh, end this part of the video because we're coming up on 30 minutes, and I'm trying to keep all these videos down to 30 minutes these days. So if you like this part of the video, hit the like button. If you didn't like it, hit the don't like button. Uh, subscribe to the channel if you like the content. Check for a link to my Facebook page in the description down below so you can follow me there on Facebook as well. You get to see my videos. You get to see other space-related content and articles, things that I post there that I can't uh, post, on <clears throat> post on YouTube. So be sure to check that out as well, and I will see you in the next video.